Welcome to a podcast by OpenTheWord.org, where we discuss a bit of Bible, a bit of life, and a bit of politics. Hi, my name is Dean Smith. We are living in perilous times today as governments of all political stripes seem intent on restricting people's liberties and freedoms, either under the guise of protecting us from COVID or banning speech that some consider offensive because it disagrees with their beliefs. In this podcast, I want to discuss the Septuagint's odd translation of a Bible verse in Deuteronomy that may help explain why this is happening. The Septuagint is a Greek version of the Hebrew Old Testament that was written around 260 BC. Since the Bible was meticulously recopied by hand down through the centuries, invariably mistakes were made. So the older the manuscript, the closer they were to the original and probably they would be more accurate. This means that the ancient Hebrew manuscripts used for the Septuagint were hundreds of years older than the text used for our modern Old Testament translations that are based on Hebrew manuscripts compiled in the 9th century AD. Now, when we read Deuteronomy 32 verse 8 in our modern Bible translations, it tells us that when God established the nations, he set their boundaries according to the number of the sons of Israel. Deuteronomy 32 verse 8. It's difficult to know what this verse is referring to. How could the borders of other countries be based on the descendants of the patriarch of Israel? It, it doesn't really make sense. And that is not even taking into account that when God created the nations in Genesis chapter 11, Jacob, who was later renamed Israel, hadn't even been born yet. However, this verse reads a lot differently in the Septuagint. It states that the boundaries of the nations were allotted or divided up according to the angels. We read, When the Most High divided the nations, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the nation according to the numbers, number of angels. The Septuagint leaves a completely different impression that angels were linked to the creation of nations. Many believe that this is the more accurate rendering, and we see Bible versions such as the NASV putting a footnote that the Septuagint states angels. Some believe this change is more significant than we realize because it also suggests that angels were put over the nations. And this idea shows up in Satan's temptation of Jesus recorded in Luke chapter 4, verses 5 to 6 when Satan offered Christ the nations of the world for a moment of worship. Then Satan adds that he was able to make this offer because they had been given to him. All the nations had been given to him, and this was a claim that Jesus never challenged. In other words, Satan is the god of this world, and as part of this, fallen angels have been set over countries to influence their governments in demonic ways. So, if this is happening, what are we to do about that? For the answer, we need to look at an incident in the book of Daniel. The prophet Daniel was raised up during Judah's captivity in Babylon. After the Babylonians were overthrown by the Persians, Daniel realized that Jeremiah's prophecy that the Jews would be, would be restored to the promised land after 70 years of captivity would soon be coming to pass and Daniel began praying for the Jews to be restored. But as he entered a 21-day period of fasting and prayer, Daniel received a message from God that a great conflict, literally warfare in the Hebrew, was brewing. And we see that in Daniel 10, verse 1. At the end of this time of prayer, a godly angel arrived with a message for Daniel. But this angel also had an interesting story and told Daniel, that he had been hindered from delivering this message by the prince of Persia, but was finally able to break through when the archangel Michael showed up to help. Since two godly angels were directly involved in the battle with the prince of Persia, we have to conclude that they were battling the fallen angel 
put over Persia. It's also not a coincidence that Daniel's 21 days of fasting and prayer coincided with the angel's statement that he was finally able to break through after three weeks. Then at the end of Daniel chapter 10, we have one of the Bible's worst chapter breaks because it literally interrupts the angel mid-sentence. The angel was speaking in the last verse of chapter 10 to Daniel and continues in the first verse of chapter 11 when the angel says, In the first year of Darius the Mede, I arose to be, a, to be an assistance and a protection for him. What this means is after successfully fighting the prince of Persia, the godly angel had taken a position right beside the king of Persia to both assist, literally strengthen, and to protect him. Because of Daniel's prayer, the spiritual atmosphere had shifted in Persia, and a godly angel was now in a position to influence the politics and the government. This influence directly led to the decree allowing Israel to return to the promised land. But this verse also implies that prior to this, the prince of Persia was influencing the political decisions being made in that country. And the same type of thing is still happening today. In the 1950s, there was a massive revival in Argentina. What led to this? In his book, the Secrets of the Argentinian Revival, Argentine min min missionary Robert Miller shares that it started at a small Bible school in City Bell, Argentina in 1951 when students began praying for the country. It turned into 10 weeks of concentrated prayer with the group spending 10 to 20 hours a day in prayer for their country. At the end of this time of prayer, a prophetic word came forth stating, Weep no more. The line of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. I have overcome the prince of Argentina. This prophetic word said the prince of Argentina had been defeated. Miller added that along with this, the prophetic word suggested this would also impact the government, which at that time was being ruled by Juan Perón and heavily influenced by his wife, Eva. Miller writes that a prophecy at another church spoke of the end of Eva's influence in Argentina, stating, Eva Perron shall tremble. She will see the thunder of my presence fall upon her face. She will tremble, for she will see me just as I am, and she shall die. I shall remove her and all her men from government. A few months later, Eva was dead, and the revival was on that saw stadiums filled, hundreds of healings, and thousands of people being saved. So while people did their part and prayed, God did his and dispatched godly angels that took out the Prince of Persia and perhaps even the Prince of Argentina. If there was ever a time to pray for our country and our political leaders, that time is now. Thank you.